Good evening, and God bless each and every one of you all on tonight. I would like to welcome you all back to my channel, Learning with Elder Shavar Ingram. We are excited and we're thankful to God that we're back sharing with you all God's word. Hallelujah. It seems like it's been a while since we have had a Bible lesson, so I'm just grateful and I'm thankful that God blessed us with another opportunity to be able to share with you all his word. And I wanna take this time first off to thank each and every one of you all for taking the time out of your busy schedules to be with me on tonight as we go through God's word. Uh, for those who uh, listened to our last week's uh, announcement, we announced that we're going to be starting a brand new Bible lesson starting tonight, talking about what are some of the signs that will be pointing to Christ's return. So I'm calling this uh, Bible lesson tonight, The Warning Sirens Are Going Off, Part One. Amen. Um, many of who have been in thunderstorms, those who have been in tornado warnings, when a storm is very close to you, uh, you will usually get an alert on your phone, alert on your television, letting you know that uh, a storm is nearby. But most of all, those who live in t uh, cities or big towns, they'll send you a warning sirens and they'll go off letting you know that storm is right up on us. So I'm coming to let you know that Christ's return is right up on us and the warning sirens are going off. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So we're going to be talking about things that are pointing to Christ's return. So before we start our Bible lesson tonight, like we always do in every lesson, we always want to start off our Bible lesson with prayer. We want to evoke God's presence. We want God's peace. We want God to just open up our understanding. We want God to come into our Bible lesson on tonight. So I'm asking you all, would you pray with me? Let's pray so we can ask God to uh, come in and have his way in our Bible lesson for tonight. Gracious Heavenly Father, in the precious name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you. I honor you and I praise you. I thank you, Lord, for another opportunity, Lord, that you have granted me to be able to share your word with these, your people. Lord, I pray that you would touch and bless each and every person who tunes into this channel. Lord, speak to their hearts, speak to their minds, and bless them to receive something from this channel. And Lord, I'm asking that you would bless me, your word bearer, your teacher, Lord, to be able to teach this lesson the way that you have given it to me. Lord, I pray that you would open up all of our revelations, give us revelation of your word, give us understanding of what your word is saying. And Lord, I give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. In Jesus' precious name, I pray. Amen. Amen, 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 and amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. I'm just thankful tonight, you all. Class, I am thankful to be doing what God has called me to do, and that is teach his word. And I'm just so thankful for you all taking the time to share with me and learn with me and grow with me in Bible study. All right, so if you have your Bibles, we're going to be going to St. Matthew chapter 24, and we're going to start at verse number three, and we're going to read down to verse number eight. I'm going to get ready to start our timer, and we're going to jump right into our Bible lesson. The warning sirens are going off. All right. So let us jump us up to speed. Now, let me say this, that when we start this portion of scripture, uh, Jesus is, um, Jesus's disciples are admiring the temple and they're in Jerusalem admiring the beauty of the temple. And they're talking about how beautiful it is. And Jesus let them know, he says that no stone is going to be left upon one another. And what he's saying is that this building this temple that you all are admiring is going to be destroyed one day. So they asked the question, let's jump to verse three and we'll read down to verse eight. And we're going to jump and uh, kind of go into this Bible lesson. All right. 
I will be reading out of the King James Version. So let's read together. It says in verse number three, and as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately saying, tell us when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? <clears throat> Excuse me. And Jesus answered and said unto them, take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Verse 6 says, And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Verse 7 says, For nations shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in divers places. Verse number eight says, all these are the beginning of sorrow. Amen. We thank God for his word. But let's look at this again at verse number three. Again, they're admiring the temple and Jesus let them know that this temple is going to be destroyed. So they start off in verse three, asking him a question. They said, Lord, when is these things going to be? And they said, what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Notice they said, Lord, what is going to be some signs? In other words, what is going to be pointing to your coming? Because uh, we're going to read something later on in Matthew at the end of the chapter it lets us know that no man, I'm going to read it real quick. This is in Matthew 24 and 36, says, but of that day and hour, know it no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my father only. And in Mark chapter 13 and 32, he says, but of that day and that hour, know it no man, no, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the son but the father. So Jesus is letting them know, hallelujah, later on in that same chapter, that nobody's going to be able to predict the time when Jesus is going to return back to this earth. So let me just start off with a disclaimer that this lesson is not going to be me predicting when Jesus is coming back. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. If there's a preacher, if there's people who are trying to predict the time when Jesus uh, is coming back, they are a false teacher because Jesus says right here that not even the angels know when he's coming back. He says only the father. And notice in Mark, he says he listed the angels. And then he said, not even the son knoweth when the when he's going to set the date for the son to come back. So I just want us to understand that people who are trying to predict the time and the hour when Jesus is going to come back, you're not going to be able to predict that. And, and, and the thing is, if we could predict that, that means we could prepare for it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Most people procrastinate and, and they wait to the last minute. And then, oh, when I know that I have enough time, then I can do this or do that. But I come to let you know that we're not going to know the time. So we need to be preparing right now. We should be looking with expectation of Christ's return at any minute. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We don't know when he is going to return, but when he does return, we want to be ready. Hallelujah. And Jesus, and I believe in this lesson, he's wanting his disciples to be ready for his return. Oh, glory be to God. Class, you should be ready. You should be anticipating Christ's return. But again, in verse three, he says, they ask the question, what are some things they're going to be uh, pointing to your return? Uh, because we know that Jesus is not going to tell them the date. He does not know the date. But they ask the question, what are some of the signs? What are some of the things that are that we're that we can look to to let us know that your return is near? And that's what we want to talk about. What are some of the signs? What are some of the warning signs that Jesus is going to be? 
uh, indicating that he's going to be coming back to this earth. Let's look at number four, because this is this this verse number four and five is of high importance. Glory be to God. He says in verse number four, and Jesus answered and said unto them, take heed that no man deceive you. My God, this is the first thing that Jesus says to them. He says, oh, take heed, be aware, hallelujah, be on guard, because he says, don't let people deceive you. Verse five says, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. So one of the first signs that I want that is pointing to Christ's return is deception. I want you to understand that we're living in a day now, we're living in an hour where deception is on a all time high. You can't even turn on the YouTube channel without seeing false teachers, false prophets, people who are teaching contrary to the word of God. And let me help us understand that the, this is why Jesus uh, and God gave us the word of God so that we can always go back to, so that we can always reference, so that we would not be deceived or confused. Glory be to God. When the enemy, when the devil tried to tempt Jesus in the wilderness, Jesus referred him back to the word of God. And the problem is, I believe the biggest problem that we have right now in these last and evil days is that people are not studying and reading and carefully examining the word of God. Oh, we're living in a day now where people are just will believe whatever our church is saying, whatever uh, the preacher is saying, I'll just accept it. I'll just believe whatever he's saying. Listen, class, I encourage you, hallelujah, I encourage you to check me out. Make sure I'm giving you the word of God because this is the importance, this is why I stress the importance of Bible, to, uh, Bible study is because you, you should be able to go back and trace everything that I'm giving you. I'm giving you straight out of the word of God, the Bible. And you have got to uh, weigh everything that we hear, hallelujah. Every word of God that we hear, every uh, preacher that preaches a word, we have got to make sure they're preaching out of the word of God. Because Jesus is saying here that take heed, don't let no man deceive you. Because if you do not know the word, mm, glory be to God. If you do not know the word, hallelujah. Jesus said in, in, in John, he said that my word is true. He said, thy word is true. God's word is the truth. And we got to stay with truth. And if you don't have truth, if you're not standing on truth, you can be easily deceived. Now, I want to get a parable there was a scripture that Jesus referenced in St Matthew chapter 13 and 19 when he was talking about giving the parable about the sower and the seed and I believe there's something that can relate to what I'm talking about but he said in St Matthew chapter 13 and 19 he says when anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not then cometh the wicked one and catches that word catches here means snatches away snatches out of their heart he says that that which was sown in his heart he says this is he which receives seed by the wayside and when jesus was describing this parable he was talking about receiving seed and how some fell on the ground and immediately the birds came up and ate that seed just like that and what Jesus is teaching is, is that if you lack understanding of God's word, glory be to God. This is why the Bible tells us in Proverbs, in all thy getting, get an understanding. You need to understand what you're reading. That's why it's so important when you, I encourage you all, when you study the word of God, begin to pray. Ask God to open up your understanding, open up your knowledge, help them. 
Ask God to give you revelation of his word. Ask God to open up your understanding so that you can know what his word is saying. And many times when Jesus would teach, he would say, he that has ears, let him hear what the spirit is saying. So it's so important how you hear. Hallelujah. It's very important when you're hearing God's word that you hold on to it, that you begin to understand it. Because he's saying here again in Matthew 13 and 19, that if you lack understanding of God's word, Satan has access to steal and take God's word out of your heart. And I believe this is why a lot of people are being deceived and deception is on an all time high is because sometimes we go to churches and when we read, sometimes we're not really trying to get an understanding. And again, I want to stress the importance. Hallelujah. And on this channel and this platform that I that God has given me to teach you all God's word. I want you to get a good understanding of God's word. And that's why I encourage you all, please write in the comment section. Please comment below. If you don't have an understanding of what I'm saying or you have a misunderstanding of what I'm saying, I will try my best to try to describe what I'm saying in the comment section because we want you all to get an understanding. We want you to grow in your knowledge and your wisdom of God's word. But I believe the number one reason why a lot of people are being deceived during this time of Christ's soon return is because they're not applying their hearts to know God's word. I tell you, it's a sad thing that we apply our hearts to so many things. We know money. We know sports. We know all of these things. And I come to let you know that you can know God's word. Mm just as much as these other things. Now, I'm not knocking or saying it's wrong for us to know sports or other things, but I'm trying to help us to understand that Christ wants us to know his word. He wants us, his word to be a part of us where we know it, hallelujah, that we relate to God's word, that we understand what Christ is saying. For his word is spiritual it's, and it's life. Hallelujah. We got to understand the Bible from a spiritual point of view. And, uh, and again, if we're not understanding God's word, uh, Satan has access to steal it from us. And not only is it important that we just don't take anything that people say at church. Hallelujah. Because notice in verse five, Jesus says, for many shall come in my name saying, I am Christ and shall deceive many. There's a lot of people who have Christ on their door. There's a lot of people that promote that they are Christians and that their church is for Christ. Hallelujah. But when you begin to look at some of the things that they teach at their church, when you begin to look at some of the things that they support at their church, it is totally contrary to the word of God. And again, this is, uh, he says that many will come in my name. I believe there's many church buildings and places that are saying they're coming in Christ's name. But when it comes to Christ's teachings, when it comes to how Christ lived, when it comes to things that Christ is wanting us to do in this life, hallelujah. He said, I want you to let your light shine that men might see your good works and glorify me. Uh, uh, people are saying in many churches, it don't take all of that. So again, is your church a Bible believing church? Are you going to a church where the Bible is being taught, where the, uh, the word of God is being uh, taught the right way? Because if not, you can be easily deceived. So I, I want us to really see that one of the signs that Christ is coming back is that deception is going to be on an all-time high. There is people trying to deceive people. And, and they know that they can deceive people if they are not reading your word. See, when you read God's word, when you study God's word, when you are hidden God's word in your heart, and when you have the Holy Spirit, the Bible says that that the Holy Spirit will bring back to your remembrance everything that Christ has said unto us. 
everything that his word has said. Christ will bring it back to your remembrance through the Holy Spirit. So again, that's why it's so important, you all, to, for us to get a great understanding and for us to hold on and, and keep God's word. Let me read one more verse, and then we're going to get ready to wrap up for this tonight's lesson. But in Galatians, in Galatians, Paul was stressing the importance of staying with God's word. He was stressing to the this Galatian church who someone came in and they uh, tried to deceive this congregation by trying to twist and turn God's word. Um, they were teaching things that are contrary to what Paul originally taught them. And Paul lets them know in Galatians 1 and 8, he says, but though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, he says, let him be accursed. Verse 9 says, as we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that you have received, let him be accursed. And what Paul is saying is somebody's teaching contrary to the word of God. He says, let them be accursed. Let everything that they're saying be accursed. Hallelujah. Don't receive. If people are not lining up with the word of God, you do not need to receive that. Hallelujah. Because it has the ability to deceive us. It has the ability to turn our heart away from God. So he understood that a little leaven, and, the, and when we talk about a little leaven, it's talking about that which makes, uh, it takes just a little leaven when you're talking about bread, just a little bit of that put into the dough will make the dough rise. So he's saying just a little bit of deception, glory be to God, will cause our faith to shipwreck. It'll cause our faith to explode and, we, and it won't be effective anymore. So that's why, again, in these last times, when we get closer to Christ's return, uh, we have got to be on guard with deception because that's the first thing Jesus started out with was deception. So we want to be on guard. We want to know our word. And again, I encourage you all, check me out. Go back. I'll put in the description all the scriptures that I'll be using. But we want to know our word and we want to make sure we're staying with the word, because if we stay with the word, then we won't be deceived. But that is all the time I had for tonight. I'm not out of word. I'm just out of time. So I thank you all for your time and your patience and allow me to be able to share God's word with you. We are going to be back on next Thursday at 5 p.m. We're actually on at every Thursday at 5 p.m. teaching Bible lessons. And if you are not subscribed to this channel, I encourage you all, please subscribe with this, subscribe to this channel. Let's grow together. Let, that's our model of this channel. Let's grow together in Bible study. So we want to see you all grow. And we say God bless you all. And we'll see you all next week. God bless. If you do not know the Lord and the pardon of your sins, the Bible tells us in Romans, the 10th chapter, that if you will confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead, you shall be saved. Repeat after me if you would desire to be saved. Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. I have sinned and done things displeasing in your sight. And Lord, I ask that you would please forgive me for all of my sins. I ask that you would come into my life and that you would save me and that you would deliver me from all of my sins. I confess you as Lord, and I ask that you would come into my life and that you will change my life and save me. In Jesus' name we pray. Now, if you have prayed that prayer with your heart and sincerely, you are saved. And I encourage you as a servant of God to pray to God, ask God to lead you to a Bible believing church, a church that is teaching and living the word of God. God bless you all. We'll continue to pray for you all. God bless.